写真じゃないから。なんだ。いよいよこの後登場します。Hey, so it's been a few days since, since we got married. I am officially married right now. I have a wife. Unfortunately, I don't have any papers or certificates I can show to you to prove that I'm actually married. And I know a bunch of you are going to say, oh, he's just lying, he's just making it up, he's not actually married, where's the proof? I did ask if we would get some kind of marriage certificate like you get in the UK, but apparently they don't really do those in Japan. We're supposed to be picking up this other piece of paper next week, and maybe I can show you that in next week's video, and you'll believe that I'm actually married. After a few days of being married, I don't really feel any different. The only difference is she's technically my wife, and not my girlfriend, I guess. She didn't change her name to my name, I didn't change my name to her name. It's just such a hassle having to change names because you have to change your name on all your documents and your ID cards and stuff like that, and it's just so much easier not to change your name. I told my parents that I got married a few days ago, they didn't really seem too fussed about it, they just said, congratulations, what's her name? They didn't even know her name, <laughs> which is kind of funny. My girlfriend's family doesn't even know we're married, and I'm not sure when she's planning on telling them. The whole process of getting married took about four hours, and、um, we had a few problems. The first problem was with my birth certificate.、Um, they had this book which had different examples of British birth certificates, and their example pictures looked different to my copy of my birth certificate, and they were making a big fuss out of it. They said, How come our example has a signature from the person who sent the copy, and your copy doesn't have a signature at the bottom? So they had to phone this place up to check if my certificate was okay to be used as a birth certificate. and It took about an hour and a half to get a reply from this place that they phoned. And after about an hour, they told us that my birth certificate is okay, there's no problems with it. The second problem we had was with one of our witnesses. And the witness is supposed to tell us her age, she's supposed to write down her date of birth. And she told us the wrong date of birth or her wrong age. And when they checked up, when they did a background check on the witness, They said that the, the ages don't match up with what we had written on the piece of paper. So we had to phone up our witness, but she was at work and she didn't respond. She didn't phone us back until an, an hour later. And when she phoned us back, she said, Sorry, I told you the wrong date for my date of birth. And we don't know if she actually forgot her own age or her own date of birth, or if she was just lying about her age to make herself seem younger. Turns out she was 59 and not 56. Which is kind of a stupid thing to do. She should have known that we needed accurate information for this legal government document, and she should have known that they would have done a background check and they would have found out that that wasn't her real age. I guess it is possible that she did forget her own age, but it sounds more likely that she was lying about it. Women are like that sometimes. Women can be funny about their own age. My mum's like this as well. She gets very secretive about her real age, and if you tell people how old she actually is, she gets a bit upset. I think that a lot of women think that their only value as a human being is their looks and their beauty, and when they get older, as they age, those things fade away. And that's the great thing about being a guy, because usually when guys age, it makes them look better because the aging process makes them look more mature, makes them look more manly, makes them look more, I don't know, rough around the edges. Anyway, thanks to her friend lying about her age, it held us up for, for almost two hours. We were just sitting there. Waiting for her to phone us back, and it was, it was kind of frustrating. After she told us her actual age, they checked it again and everything matched up, and my birth certificate was okay. And after that, there w a s no more problems. They just finished 
sorting out our documents, we finished signing and they said come back next week to pick up the final papers and you're technically married now, congratulations. I think that person working at the city hall was the only person who's congratulated us so far. Everyone's been against this idea, everyone's been against the marriage, her family. Um, I guess my family haven't really been against it, they haven't said anything. Uh, but a lot of you guys in the comments have definitely been very against it. My girlfriend's, a few of my girlfriend's friends, even her own sister, said that this was a dumb idea and they weren't supportive. Yeah, well, screw you because we don't need your support. We got married anyway. You see, that's the thing. Even if you're against the idea and you're not willing to help us by being our witness, we're still going to do it anyway. We're just going to get someone else to be our witness. If we've decided to get married, then there's not really anything that's going to stop us from doing it. After we finished getting married, we went over to the immigration center, which was completely filled with Chinese people. I don't understand why so many Chinese people want to come to Japan. I mean, isn't China big enough already? Why do you want to come over here to this tiny little island? Anyway, we went to immigration to change my visa and we handed in all the documents we prepared in this envelope and they gave us a number and we sat in immigration for an hour and a half just waiting for them to call our, our number. And when they did, they gave us this piece of paper saying to go home and wait for us to send you a letter. And they stamped my passport. They gave me a new stamp in my passport that said, I can stay in Japan. I can overstay my, my tourist visa for up to two months until we get the letter back from immigration. They also said that if there were any documents that they needed that were missing, they would send us a letter and then we need to send those documents to them in the post. I don't know how long it's going to take. It could take a few weeks or a month or more than a month. And um, I don't know what I'm supposed to do if the if the visa gets rejected. If my application for the visa gets rejected, am I allowed to apply again for the visa? I'm not quite sure what my options are if I get rejected. I'll be in a bit of a tricky situation if my spouse visa does my spouse visa application does get rejected, and I have to go home because then I'll be stuck in England and. I'll have a wife all the way here in Japan, halfway across the world. I guess my only other option would be to save up some money and then apply to a Japanese language school and get a, a student visa. Apart from that, I'm not quite sure what else I could do. I guess I could go to university, graduate, and then get a normal working visa like everyone else does. Hey, and welcome back to Cooking with Daniel. Today we're going to be making a delicious meal of pasta. As you can see, I've already got bacon and onions frying in some olive oil. We're just going to give that a stir around. This is the olive oil that I used. And this is the tomato and basil pasta sauce that we're going to be using. We have some fagioli kidney beans. Now we're going to add in the pasta and stir it together with the bacon and the onions. And now we're going to add in the tomato and basil pasta sauce. And the kidney beans. Give it a good stir around. We also have some frozen vegetables, carrots, peas, sweet corn, and we're going to add that in as well. And it's finished. Eat it. 